Hi everyone, it's Peter from PS Sound. And this video is going to about this Honda, the Honda Accord, my own personal car. And it's, it's highly overdue because I think the last video you could see on YouTube showing this car was maybe at the UK Emma Finals in 2019. I don't think I, I have shared much of this ever since. Yes, there is a dedicated Facebook page to this car where you could see updates, pictures, um, and I'm going to put that into the description. Then you can see the full build in pictures in chronological order. I have folders. Um, if you click on photos and then click on see all on the page on Facebook, then you can scroll back down and you can see where it all started eight years ago. The main reason to take this video right now is because the Honda is now officially retired from daily use, daily abuse and potentially from competition as well. I don't want to say that it will never compete again because who knows but I definitely won't drive this car too far anymore. It has done everything for me, for the business, for the reputation of PS Sound and I can't be more thankful how reliable this car was now it's 16 year old the clock is on 206k and not that i worry because this could go another 100k without any problem it has never let me down i looked after it too but it's time for this car to rest and for the foreseeable future it's going to stay here in the workshop and uh, you know it's it's available for demos if we have local meets then it's gonna turn up <coughs> and make an appearance but it won't be used daily because that's the thing many people told me in the past Pete, don't you worry that something is going to happen to this car but at the same time i built this system to enjoy it more than anything so of course i wanted to drive this car i wanted to hear this system every day and it has just done that so let's run through what this car has right now you will still see a bit of changes here and there. Um, many people heard it a few weeks ago in a meeting and this car can still surprise people, especially those who have never sat in it. Well, to be fair, even those who, who have sat, sat in it before, because yes, this car has become five times UK champion in sound quality classes, in multimedia classes. It, it became three times second and once uh, first at Euro Finals, it's vice champion in SPL. Yeah, it sounds crazy. A sound quality car should never really do SPL, right? Okay, I was lucky with it. Fair enough. I was in a class that was uh, kind of dying out, and we only had two cars in it, so I was the second. <laughs> um, but for a sound quality car, this car can truly go loud. Um, then, of course, multimedia has always been the class for this car where it set a standard bar when it became European champion. Yeah, this this system with, with a screen takes everything to a whole different level. And then the last time in 2019, uh, when we had Euro finals in Salzburg, um, this was second in Master Limited class behind Brown Ice. Many people know him in Emma. He's, I don't even know, 10 times U European champion. Um, he popped in, down into that classroom expert because uh, he found a, a legal door to, to be able to do that. And it was, you know, winning is great, but seeing people's reactions when people were queuing up at this car for three days and they were arguing, some people were seriously arguing, that, oh, this is my turn, you know, I waited several hours to sit in this car. Uh, it was mental. I had my missus on the last day by the car navigating people you know don't don't wait here come back in two hours time because there are three more people who want to listen to it so the reputation of the car has has always been strong and everyone wanted to hear what this system was was doing okay let's run through it i try to talk slowly um, i'm sorry for my voice guys i'm a bit under the radar um but getting getting out of covid yay Okie dokie, so the back end has always been the, the highlights. Everyone wanted to hear this craziness. When I built this in 2016, 17, I'm not even sure when I built this 
Nobby, I must mention him. Um, he's a competitor in MOS as well. He helped me to build the steel frame for this manifold. It's an IB manifold, true IB application. Again, there will be a link uh, for the true IB uh, installs and also to, to the playlist of the Honda. All the videos you will be able to find in the description to this. You will be able to see where I started this when I first had just two 15 inch subs, then I had two 18 inch FI subs, and then back to acoustic elegance at the end with these custom built uh, 18 inch drivers. So these drivers, just to make it clear, they breathe to the exterior, to the outside bird. And underneath, I have huge hole cut, a 15 by 15 inch hole, with just a speed poke cloth right now. It's nice and dirty. And I have never had issue with any water, anything going through. I had a time when I had ring guide underneath it. I had a time when I had nothing underneath it, especially when I had the FI subs. I was abusing the FI subs for a year and a half at least without any protection. And at the end, I pulled them out, I wiped them off, and I had absolutely no problem with them. Because what people forget when the car drives on the road, even on wet road in rain, the water flows underneath it, it flows away, and then the tires also push the water to the outside. So there's no chance for the water to go up into the manifold unless you drive into a two foot deep lake, then fair enough, you know, water is going to reach up there, but you just don't do that. Simple as that. <clears throat> So I had no issue with it at all. Yes, it's a very specific and drastic application, but what it does is something that you can't compare to anything. It's super transient, really musical, fast, crazily fast, even at the low, low end. And you can hear all the details all the way down to single digits. I know it may sound crazy to some people, but once you listen to this car, it will all make sense. For many people, this is like the standard, what you can do with true IB subs, how low you can play a system and how you can still hear detail below 20 hertz. And when you doubt that you can't hear below 20 hertz, I always try to give a demo to people at the end with a signal generator and we go down to five hertz. I'm not lying, down to five hertz. The system can play down to two, to be fair, but below five hertz, it drops drastically. It, it still can, you know, it can pressurize the, the car at five hertz. There's a video for that in the playlist as well, where we were testing that at Euro finals three years ago and I don't know we were doing something like 130 something even at 5 or 10 Hertz something stupid and yeah most people can say that they can hear from 12 Hertz 12 13 Hertz they can hear a clean fully developed sine wave so yep if you are skeptical trust me come to UK come down to our workshop down south on the south coast and you will experience it so that's that. That's my crazy subs at the back. Um, yeah, we could call them infra subs to be fair. So the system is running on two batteries. There's one 70 amp hour AGM at the front and a 60 amp hour lithium at the back. A Victron 60 amp hour battery. That's been there linked to the front. Linked, not separated. Not, you know, there's no relay between them. They are linked and I have had no problem about it. If you want to know more about it, you can also find the link to Patreon, where I have long educational videos where we're talking about it. So if you want to learn more, please go to Patreon, then I can direct you to the video. So two batteries running everything, and those two together are perfectly enough to run the system even for like four or five hours without the engine running even at high levels and I can still stay even after several hours the system is at like 12.56 volt because this way it starts from 13.2 13.3 because when they are both fully charged obviously the lithium pulls the voltage up and then it floats way way higher to start with and the system never really drops to low voltage especially because this is so efficient it hardly takes any power also in the true IB playlist there's a video when I was talking about how much power true ib subs require if you haven't seen that yet you can watch that too here on youtube and that's going to explain a lot to you why this application doesn't require mega power yet you get so much output so power this costs two batteries that side is power distribution i have everything braided labeled 
usual Emma master level. Then the signal is sorted out by the Zepco HDSP5 Z16. Now currently also has the ESS 9038 Pro highest level of deck in it. And yeah, that shit is hot. I mean, someone sent me a DSP that has better sound coming out of it. Um, I'm up for testing that, but that Zapco is stunning now with especially the ESS Pro chip. It's, yeah, I'm not gonna go into detail and, and, and praise it, but honestly, that thing sounds sublime. So that sort out the signal for the whole setup. I have a 150.6 AP amp on the top that runs the mid and the tweeter up front and the rear feel. Then there's another AP down there in the middle. Currently I only use four channels out of that. Uh, two channels bridged for each 8 inch drivers up front in my sealed enclosures on the doors. Two channels are spare. I have plans with them. Maybe one day I use them. Then you can see a small ST range digital amp there that runs shakers. I have tactile transducers in the front seats just for fun. Some people love it, some people don't need it. But just for showing something different, it's really cool. And then I have a SP400.2. Well, the Z400.2 SP. You can see the reflection in the black plexi over there. Can see the logo of it so that amplifier is right all the way back on the the angle of the back seats so that two channel amplifier runs these subs one channel on each sub before someone asks it again how these subs are wired because i always get this asked pete did you wire one of the subs out of phase no this is not a box in a box yes you would need the subs to be push-pull, but this is a manifold, so both cones move, let's say, out like that, and then in. They move like this, because they have to pump the air into the cabin and out of the cabin. If they were moving like this, then one would be pushing the pressure in, the other would be sucking the pressure out, so then they would cancel out. This way, it's not going to work. They have to work like this. And for that, you just have to wire them um, the same, exactly the same. So it's not that difficult. That's where you can see the wiring properly terminated with ferrules, protected with hinge heat shrink, and the cable is protected by uh, braiding, tack flex thingy, you know, time consuming shit. So that's the back end running the system. Let's go to the front. Let's have a look at that. To be fair, I turn the lights off. I have a beautiful controller here. Bang. Done. 16 year old car. Power target. Beautiful thing. Okie dokie. So, up front. Some of you may remember that. Uh, I had four parts showing the build of this enclosure. Again, if you go to the description and check out the playlist to the Honda, then you will find this 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 part of the build. Yeah, it took me 80 hours to build a pair of these. Because from this point on, the enclosure goes further out all the way till the gloss, but clearing the gloss. So the gloss is fully functional, but the enclosure is extended in order to gain space for my legs because without that it would be quite intrusive so now my foot is on the pedal and I still have space it doesn't block anything but if I didn't push the enclosure further out I wouldn't have had depth for the driver then you know your leg would be like this and then the car is not functional it's quite surprising for many people that uh, I have a lot of power on those 18 inch drivers they are custom built for me from Ecuton they are the, oh, don't ask me for model number, but they are the Neo, Neo version, Neo Neo Demium version, probably the most expensive 18-inch they make. And it was custom built for automotive environment. It's not a, a driver that you see on the shelf. 
from them. Um, yeah, they they are very accurate. I can say that, and they can also play low depending on on how you want to set up the system. I can say now when we were competing in sound quality, and when it became vice champion in sound quality, then it was crossed at 28 hertz with a 24 dB slope, so it was playing pretty pretty low. Um, yes, we also had to meet certain things on the uh, spec sheet of the disc, uh, judging sheet of the disc, where you had to play 30 hertz from up front, clean, and yeah, when the front speakers play it and can play it, then it, yeah, it's definitely up front. And it's quite surprising that people never really feel any vibration. The only downside of an application like this is that when your leg is there, then you can feel vibration from the driver. Although if you sit like this, then you don't feel it that much. Some people can be distracted by that when they can feel the pressure on their legs. But it's one of those things that every single car has, you know, some sort of compromise. And even if I really wanted to, in this car, you can't do kicks. I mean, yeah, right hand driven cars, pain in the ass. I have fuse block there, the body opening, and just so much crap. You, you can't, even if I relocated everything, you can't really put any driver there. You don't have depth, you don't have width, space. This is just not that car. We are currently, we are working on a car, you will see, uh, which has space in the kicks and we could put six and a half and it stays behind the trim panel. So that's great when you have a car like that or you buy a Mercedes and then the mid base right there behind the brake pedal in the firewall. That's a beautiful thing. Not this, when I bought this car eight years ago, I didn't really think about things like this, but um, well, hey ho, live and learn. But at least I built these enclosures and I learned a lot from that and they work very well, to be fair. I would call them kick base drivers because um, I had many setups on the dash and they never had to play high. The drivers on the dash could always play lower. So yeah, but they they work fine. What people have to realize that location and application is everything for a mid base in a car. And recently I had a time that for a short period of time uh, I had mismatched mid base in the car. On this side, actually, I had my old SB acoustic uh, eight, nine inch driver, whatever it was. You can see from the playlist what I used first in here, which was a 89 pounds speaker each. And on one side, I had that. And on the other side, I had the Akiton for a short time when the production was slow when I had to wait for the driver. Because there were times when I didn't get speakers in time and I had to pull the speakers out of my car and then use them for customers you know we do everything for the customers and i was like whatever you know i just put the sb acoustic back in here um i tune it and people won't hear the difference really you know they will hear the mid bass kicking right there from the top of the dash and then when i tell them that hey you have that speaker there and then another one there and then they're like what i'm like yeah that's 89 pounds and the other side is like more than 1.2k so and then, then you know eyes pop out it yeah that was good for a bit of education for customers and people sitting in the car because then they could realize that uh price tag is, is not everything you you really have to be familiar with the fact that in a car mid base is the most difficult thing to get right location is everything and application also has to be right for the specification of the driver. If the thin and small parameters of the driver are not suitable for the application, then good luck. So that's the eight up from there. Yeah, you can see little changes there because some of you might have seen pictures where I had a seven inch hybrid audio mid-range speaker, the uh, X6 here facing more towards me at around this area. That's what we had in 2019 at the Euros. And yeah, there were reasons why I needed that because on the technical uh, tracks on the Emma disc, we had certain songs which were beautifully designed and mastered in a way 
that uh, they put instruments which were peaking at a certain frequency. Well, they had an African hand drum, which uh, on the old disc in between 14 and 15 was peaking at 124 hertz. Why that is important is because most cars with mid bass drivers in the door location, they all have acoustical problems, especially on, on driver's side. They have a huge cancellation somewhere between 120 and 160. And that track was highlighting it that easy. So when you had the hand drum going left, boop, boop, it, then it went right, boop, boop. They had to sound the same, the same focus, the same size. But if someone had uh, a dip in the response with the mid bass on driver's side, then you just didn't have the body for the instrument and, and judges could pick it straight away. It was a very clever disc for that. If if the car, if the system was technically as good as it, as it should have, and I had problem with that. So when I had a three inch mid-range up there and I couldn't play it lower than 180 or 200 hertz, then that problem always appeared and judges could tell that mm, something is really wrong here. This car is not gonna be in the high category because it has a big problem. So it not just only affected my technical uh, scoring that the focus wasn't right on that side, but then it also affected tonality later down the line when they were judging, um, let's say, mid-bass performance because it wasn't as full-bodied, it wasn't as detailed as it should have been without that cancellation on driver's side. So that was the point when I needed a large mid-bass driver on the dash that could play low and I could cross that one low enough to get rid of the acoustical problem and then I could play low from the dash and get that right get the scores right. Simple as that. However, would I ever use a 6-7 inch driver on the dash? Not necessarily, because you can you can use a 4 inch driver and that does pretty much everything that you ever need in a car. Especially if you don't compete, you don't have to worry about those things because those, those issues with mid-bass in door location are pretty narrow and for daily driving it's not going to affect your listening pleasure. If you are a hardcore competitor, that's a different story. Then, yeah, it's it's always a learning cur curve with the car and you have to figure out what the car does. And that's going to determine where you put speakers and what speakers, you know. So, after the hybrid X6, and probably that was the last video from the UK finals as well, then um, we changed to the Acuton um, mid-bass, the... 165 AM automotive driver on the dash just to have everything accurate in the car not just for the sake of having the same brand and you know high price tags no the fact is once you use an Accuton driver you realize what a low distortion speaker is like it's a very different word currently there's not much I could put against the Accuton automotive speakers and get the same performance but yeah, as you can see, I have a converter plate there on, on the dash because I don't have that acute on there because I had to give that to one of my customers half a year ago. Um, and till I got my replacement speakers, which arrived a month ago, but I still haven't had time to put them in because I'm going to actually have the C100s, the four inch drivers in here now, because I can tune the system even with the four inch, both for daily preset and both for competition just fine and and the mid-range from those the four inch Ecutons is just I call it reference level honestly that mid-range is quite something but because I didn't have that and I I sold my six and a half from the dash I dropped in the Stag MSS3 drivers half year ago and for many people's surprise, this speaker there is doing something quite silly in my car. Fair enough. Those people who have heard it, um, they were instantly like, oh shit, Pete, I need these speakers in my car. What people also have to realize that the hardware behind these speakers is, is not entry level. So when you have great amps, great DSP, now with the highest level of deck, that the price of that deck is more expensive than a standalone DSP from Moscone, Helix, or GL, or any others. You know, that's just a deck. Then the price of the DSP 
and of course good source good uh, songs lossless songs then of course my tuning so a lot goes into what sound comes out of a driver and of course the location in this car for that driver uh, works really well and probably in the next video i will play music and i will i will show things a few things from this car but in this one i'm not going to play music because of copyrights because youtube is a yeah funny place um but uh, those people who have heard this car with these <coughs> stack speakers can tell that the system wasn't wasn't shy of anything it, it wasn't showing lack of resolution detail focus it wasn't showing lack of output nothing compared to what i had in it and then now people could ask okay but then why do you put ecuton back into it <clears throat> if you say that you know it didn't lack anything well we we know you know above a certain line the the difference is is small and when diminishing returns yeah how far how far you go how much you spend on speakers can you actually hear the difference um with those ecuton mids yes you can hear the difference i definitely can hear the difference and as this car stands it's part of the business and it has to show its best performance to anyone who sits in it so for me it's fine for for a daily customer I can build systems even with these tech mid-range speakers and they do pretty much everything so even if they are not super expensive because they are something like 400 quid a pair here in, in UK they they can really hold their value and and do really well they can play low for competition if needed um, they can play really loud as well they have great detail honestly I can't say anything bad about them they don't have any weird buzzes and whatnot and if after half a year and, and the amount of abuse they got in this car they they are still working fine they don't have any distortion and and uh, with some speakers you can have these weird buzzes and whatnot and then it drives me crazy these play beautifully clean yeah that's trim ring flashy trim and then the reflection on the windscreen is something many people don't like but then you can paint it or you can have a trim ring over it and then then it hides it we use these drivers in the uh, Amarok in the Clio they have yeah we have these in the Suzuki as well so we we have had these in many cars and um, they are pretty predictably awesome so I can't say anything bad about them the only thing I can say about these for those who think, oh, I'm going to put it in my pillar. Yeah, you'll be surprised. Because having a 4-inch driver on the dash may disappear and doesn't look that big. As soon as you put it on pillars, they become extortionately big. In most cars, they just don't look right. They are so big, especially with the mounting ring and you give enough airspace for the driver on the pillar. Then it just it doesn't look right. So be aware of that. Then on to tweeters. Well... That's something I haven't changed in the car for a long, long time. And when it comes to tweeters, that's the only part in the system that's probably the only thing I wouldn't be able to change out to anything else and expecting similar performance. There's just nothing on the market. Someone has to be pretty brave to send a pair of speakers to me and expecting better performance, honestly. Because when it comes to transparency detail dynamics and distortion level especially that's where these speakers are just stupid um yes they are very revealing so in the wrong hands it can be bad i mean they show not just the good things but also the bad things but on a whole different level i had um a video when i was saying that these speakers are dangerous and some people misunderstood it and i i i heard from a few friends that i was a big topic on on some car audio forums especially in the us and many people were slagging me off and saying that how can anyone say such a stupid thing how can a speaker be dangerous it's not like a shark <laughs> fair enough okay you know my you know i wasn't born in uk and english is my second language i could have put it differently what I meant by saying that these speakers are dangerous is that 
yeah, they will show the problems, the flows in a system way, way, way easier than than a less revealing driver. And that's why it's dangerous because um, you can go wrong with them very easily and then you won't like them. Whereas in this car, if, if something people always say, probably, yeah, nine out of 10 times, is that the system just sounds so clean. Literally, the word they always say is clean. Is it clinical? Then people could say, ah, that's not for me. This is too clinical. I like it laid back. I like it, you know, less detail on the top end. Fair enough. I understand that as well. That's a personal preference. But when it comes to accurate reproduction of music, if you want to create a system where the hardware disappears and the instruments sound accurate, real, lifelike, then you need a driver that can truly deliver that. So if someone wants a laid back system, that's far away from accurate system. Um, and yes, uh, this system is, is not laid back. This is, um, yeah, delivering a lot of detail. Sometimes I feel like I just hear too much detail or you are not used to it because we build cheaper daily systems to customers. And whenever I jump back into this car driving home and I was just like, holy shit, yeah, I love it. That's that's the the bar that any system has to reach. And to be fair, now with this deck change in the DSP, the the whole character of, of the, the setup on the top end changed a lot. And even if it's so transparent and detailed, it's less clinical. It's more like, yeah, I like the word when people say warm, but it sounds really natural. It's, it's not showing, you know, when Sometimes, especially when you listen to badly recorded songs, or if you listen to rock music, that the sound, the system can make you quite tired. It's a bit fatigue because it just delivers too much between two and five, two and six kilohertz. And um, there's less of that in the system right now. But then of course, I'm fully aware that some songs are just not mastered so well. And on the higher levels, it, it can do that, especially with a system like this, that's so transparent. But honestly, I I don't know what else I could swap these speakers to. In the next video, I'm going to share uh, of this car. When I will play music, I will make a preset for you guys when you will hear these tweeters playing on their own in the system. Then, then you will have an idea about why it's so special. And I'm going to explain exactly, you know, what you can do with these drivers. Front sub empty has been empty ever since I built these enclosures on each side. I just haven't had time to change it back to factory with the glove box. Although I don't even know I would be able to do that because we had to chop out so many things, brackets and whatnot, to to make that enclosure possible. And I know some people just hate a location like that for the front sub, but but especially when it comes to Emma, then they they measure the distance from the from the seat to the pedal or to the brake pedal or to the closest pedal, and you have to have the same distance on passenger side in the footwell. These cars don't have much space in the footwell. So yeah, I had a front sub box there. You can see it on the Facebook page of, of this car. And yeah, I lost point because I was just a bit short of, of distance. So when I put it there, at least I didn't lose those points. But yeah, it's slightly different. You always get better loading from down there, especially if you can fire the sub forward. Um, but yeah, that was good fun when I had an 8 inch subwoofer there. Technically, it wasn't as as accurate, especially when you put in a, a beefy driver that I had there, the Hertz ML2000. It was good fun, but after a year, it gave up. <laughs> Having a 4-inch voice call on a small driver with a really thin spider, which spider has to stretch a lot on a short distance, after a while, it just gives up. And not at the glue, at the coil but uh, like 10 mil away on the spider, the spider cracked. It's just too high movement for a spider. When you have a wider spider, then, you know, that only has to move a little bit. It doesn't stretch as far, but a short one just goes crazy, crazy angles, and it gave up. Well, I sold it to someone, they glued it, and it's still playing. They, they have a lot of fun with it, but uh, 
yeah, just be aware of that. I never believe that a driver that has to do crazy excursion is the best option for musicality. I'd rather have a speaker with large corn area and low excursion. That's going to be always more musical and dynamic to me. That's just my view on how to make a dynamic, lively system. But of course, in certain applications, you have no choice. Then you just have to use whatever you can, especially in sealed boxes, in order to play low. You need decent excursion if, if you want to play loud too. So, sources. I still have the FIO X7 Mark One, And yes, and Android support has been stopped on this device because it's old. It's from 2015, 16. I don't even know why I had it for so many years. And it's still working. Um, and... So because of that, Tidal doesn't work on it anymore, but at least I can still play music from the SD card. I have an uh, SD card slot on the side. That's where I I could uh, put the, the music in for competition as well from the SD card, and then judges could just slide between tracks. As simple as that. There you go, Adele. Um, so that, that's that been one of my main digital sources. I have the coax at the bottom with the USB. No, coax is on top on this one. Uh, that's why this panel doesn't sit back properly anymore, because in the last five years I was taking this player in and out, in and out, almost every day, using it at home, on jobs. When I used to be a sound engineer before COVID, um, I was taking this player everywhere and I had to take it out a million times. So this panel would need rebuilding with new clips or something. Because when I, when I had to push it up and pull it out, unplug it, then there was always force on that panel on the top. So that's one source on coax um, and on this HDSP controller, that's where I could click on coax, there you go, or you could go to optical, Zcom is your HD Bluetooth module that I use for the iPad, because I also have an iPad that sits there, you will also see that in the next video. Uh, I have a slot down there where it can sit in a magnet built in there slots against it and then you have a screen at eye level in the car and yeah that just takes everything to a whole different level so several digital inputs and then i also have of course the hd player that can play music from a usb from from the dsp straight from the motherboard and that's pretty much the best option you you can have uh, operation of it is a bit bit of a faff i i don't say it's not uh, many people gave it up because of that because the screen is a bit too small you can see what well, five songs at a time then you have to you know scroll and then if some people have big fingers or the screen is dirty then you know it doesn't want to launch songs so easily but otherwise once you get used to it it does it you can skip tracks like that you can go back to directory or then you can go to artists albums you know so yeah you can live with it but it's a bit too small if you have it up from there of course it's it's easier to see it like uh, i shared in chris's tt we have the same controller that's something I should also rebuild because this was the space for the director. I had the Helix director here before and this was just dropped in here. It looks unfinished. It looks shit, to be fair. But it's one of those things. Shoemaker, right? Never never, never has the best pair of shoes because never has time to, to, you know, make a shoe for himself. It's pretty much the same thing with me now. I hardly have time for this. And that's another reason why competition is always always getting the car into the best shape and when do i have time for that anymore that's that's one thing it doesn't mean i don't want to compete i want to compete i want to see old friends i want to have fun with them um but yeah with this car as i mentioned for 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 the honda it's, it's time to retire and rest because we want to preserve this system for people to be able to hear it because this system can can show so much is it the best system on the planet? No, it's not. We have built so many cars since which had better attributes in certain ways. But it's always about 
how many good things you can highlight and how you can you know hide the bad things in a system this this car ticks many boxes but we built cars which in, like okay the insignia the insignia was special that was more accurate technically was more correct um the only the only thing that car couldn't do is obviously yes having two 18s at the back of mine is is something to that's that's difficult to to beat when it comes to dynamics and, and resolution at the low end. But we fitted an IB15 uh, Acoustic Elegance sub for him at the end, uh, true IB the same way, and, and it was beautifully musical. It blended in beautifully, but he had a Acuton front sub, so that was doing something really well. Mid bass was in the kicks, up, up front really far, um, that I can't do in this car. He had the Acuton C100 mids that I have never had in the car, but I'm going to swap these stags out soon for those. So that, that car was beautiful. Uh, sadly, it's just the past. I mentioned in one of the videos when I was with Chris and his TT the last time we were talking at the end, and I I, I explained what happened to, to that system, unfortunately. So that's exactly what I don't want to, want to, to happen. I don't want this car to have... You know, any any accident or any stupid people vandalizing it or something, because I, yeah, I have to preserve it for customers and for anyone. If you if you can ever come to to UK or if you live in the UK, honestly, we are happy to give you a demo. We don't expect anything from you. If you never come back to us to get a system from us, it's not a problem. But I want people to get a reference level. After that, wherever they go. They will understand what to expect. I had so many old installers, uh, sales guys coming and, and sitting in this car and, and they just got such an experience that they were like, Pete, we've never had anything like this. And that's what we want to have with everyone. Because, um, yeah, this is a special car. Many, many hours went into it. I tell to people that this would take me 800 hours to build from scratch again. Where do I have 800 hours on the top of the daily jobs when we do 40, 50, 60 hours on projects a week? And then I have to run the business as well on the side. It's just virtually impossible. Unless if I was doing 20 hours at the weekend. But even so, 20 hours at the weekend, you know, you have... Let's say 50 weekends. If you keep two weekends from the year for yourself, still, you know, it's it's not enough time. Not enough time. And, and then you sacrifice everything from your life. So the reality that is, is that I can never build a car like this for myself. And again, that's another reason why I, I want to retire it now. Of course, the question now rises. If I retire this car, what, what's what's my new car going to be? We will get to that uh, at some stage. I will introduce it to, to you guys. You will see. It's going to be exciting. Um, but uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Jeez, I talked for 40 odd minutes without stop. Hopefully you are still here with me. And hopefully you, you learned something from this project. Uh, as I mentioned, please go to the description. You can find many links. Many links where you can see a lot from this car on Facebook, all the pictures, all the playlists showing this build, all the educational videos on YouTube as well as on Patreon. I even had videos on Patreon where I did test with this enclosure, opening it up, breathing into the door, how that would work out. I'm not going to go into details because you have to watch that video. That's a long video and it explains what happened that way, those tests, whatnot. And uh, in the next video showing this, I'm going to play music, a bit of a demo, as much as you can. can call it a demo, record it with the phone, but at least I can show you a bit more about this. It can give you a bit more inspiration to push your own systems and get them sounding better. So this is where I leave it, guys. Hopefully you liked it. Feel free to share it, comment, all the usual things. Subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed yet. And then I see you in the next one. Take care.